let us look at two uh, definitions uh, one is called enclosed the other one is encirclement so what is enclosed first a point or region is said to be enclosed by a path if the point or region lies right side of the path that is enclosed what is encircled or encirclement a point or a region said to be uh, encircled by a closed path if the point or region lies inside the closed path let us look at uh, these two examples uh, let us look at here first one i have point a and point b then uh, i have a circle a closed path which is anti clockwise direction then i can say directly here your point a is enclosed but point b is not enclosed uh, point a is not encircled but point b is encircled the second case if you look at i change the direction uh, if it is now clockwise direction then i can say your point a is not enclosed point b is enclosed and uh, point a is uh, not encircled point b is encircled so if the direction of the path is a clockwise direction then i can say the point is both uh, encircled as well as the enclosed by the closed path now so let us look at uh, this uh, image and uh, see how uh, your pole and the zeros of the system uh, we can explain with the uh, principle of argument now uh, let us take a function the function is f of s and this function has poles on zeros look at i have poles on zeros like this p1 p2 z1 z2 and so on so i can choose any arbitrary contour arbitrary contour is a closed path with a clockwise direction so when it is a clockwise direction i said the point enclosed as well as the encircled now depending upon the arbitrary contour and when you map this arbitrary contour into f of s plane f of s plane is also like s plane then i can map that into this then i can have number of encirclement the origin the principle of argument gives the relation between number of poles and zeros enclosed by this arbitrary contour and number of encirclements around the origin now the first case i am taking uh, i am choosing the arbitrary contour such that it is it is going to enclose only two zeros it is enclosing two zeros now when you map into f of s then what do you mean by mapping so i'll take one tip of uh, this arbitrary contour Uh, let us say this point is a plus j b. Substitute this a plus j b in f of s function. Then you will get another complex number. And look at the complex number in f of s plane. Then similarly you change this point. Then again there will be change in the your plot in f of s plane. So this way we can plot it. So as this point is moving along with this arbitrary contour, then the corresponding mapping is also changing. So what is most important is not the shape, but uh, how many times it is encirclement is important for us in principle of argument. Okay. So what I can say here now the uh, this path arbitrary contour or a closed path is enclosing two zeros. Therefore, there are two encirclements around the origin in clockwise direction, right? Clockwise direction two encirclements. Similarly, in the second case, when you take only poles, I am enclosing only poles here. Then Then uh, how many number of encirclement? There are two number of encirclement. The direction is anti-clockwise direction. Okay. In the third case, I am taking two poles and two zeros. The number of encirclements, no encirclement around the origin. Then fourth case, if you look at, there are two poles and one zero. So the closed path is enclosing two poles and one zero, and the corresponding encirclement uh, around the origin is only one encirclement. That to be, it is in uh, anti-clockwise direction in f of s plane. So on another case also we can take uh, if this closed path is not enclosing any poles and zeros again no encirclements around the origin. Now from uh, this concept we can say that we can develop an equation which is called principle of argument equation that uh, the number of encirclement around the origin in anti-clockwise direction depends on your number of poles and zeros enclosed by the a uh, closed path that means n is equal to p minus z if p is greater than z number of encirclements will be in anti clockwise direction if z is greater than p then there are 
n n is going to be negative which means clockwise encirclements more number of zeros are there clockwise encirclements more number of poles are there anti clockwise uh, encirclement therefore number of encirclements around the origin f of s plane depends on number of poles and zeros enclosed by the closure path or closure contour now when when you choose this arbitrary contour it should not pass through any poles and zeros of the f of s function if so then what happens then there are some discontinuous in the uh, f of s plane uh, mapping okay so to avoid that uh, let us not pass through the singular points which are nothing but my poles and zeros now this concept can be used to find the closure loop stability of the system like which as which will use the method now what will be the arbitrary contour or closed path in nyquist stability criterion so what we want is i want to look at what are the poles that are there in the right half of the s plane therefore i can take the entire right half of the s plane as my arbitrary contour now the poles and zeros inside the f of s function the poles and zeros inside the f of s function uh, decides the number of encirclements around the origin now now nyquist has chosen the function is not f of s the function is q of s and for q of s function what are the poles open loop poles what are the zeros of q of s function closed loop poles therefore the q of s function has open loop poles and closed loop poles so p is nothing but open loop poles z is nothing but closed loop poles now if you know the number of encirclements in q of s plane then if you know p value how many poles lying right of the s plane then z how many poles lying in uh, right of the s plane also we can find out which gives the closed loop stability of the system but while mapping from s plane to q of s plane we are going to look at the encirclement around the origin but in nyquist stability we are not going to map from s, s, s plane to q of s plane we are going to map from s plane to gh of s plane we know that gh of s is nothing but q of s minus 1 therefore the reference point origin in principle of argument uh, is changed from origin to minus 1 when it comes to nyquist stability criteria now uh, we need to look at the number of encirclement not around the origin we are going to look at number of encirclements around the critical point minus 1 plus z0 then i can develop uh, the statement of nyquist stability like this a closed loop system is said to be stable if the number of encirclement around the critical point in anti clockwise direction is equal to number of open loop poles that are in the right half of the s plane then the system is stable so otherwise the system is unstable which means the number of encirclements around the critical point in anti clockwise direction is not equal to number of open loop poles that are there in the right of the s plane then system is unstable then what is marginally stable so if nyquist uh, plot passes through the point minus 1 plus a0 because whenever it is passes through the point minus 1 plus a0 we cannot find number of encirclements okay so whenever the nyquist plot passes through the point minus 1 plus a0 then we say the system is marginally stable or critically stable or the system is oscillatory response or oscillatory system 